There is still a group of UAP observations that are hard to explain in technological terms. On the one hand, during an observation, the UAP is a real, physical, material object that is traceable by radar systems, visible by FLIR cameras and conventional photo cameras, and so on. A leading research and development engineer and manager for NASA, Paul R. Hill, describes in his book that UFOs have a solidity and hardness that is given by the sound of bullets striking UFOs. Quote, UFOs have been shot at hundreds of times. On many occasions, the bullets have been heard to impact. On other occasions, the distinctive whine of ricochets has been heard. He then gives a specific example of Mr. Michael Campiador, who was driving his car on May 13, 1967 in Utah when he heard an unusual loud humming sound and then noticed a huge object about 50 feet in diameter hovering above his car. Frightened, he loaded an ammunition clip in his pistol and squeezed off point-blank shots. He heard the bullets hit and ricochet as if they had struck metal. The ricochet of bullets in this and similar cases indicate that the UFO shell is composed of a hard material, or at least presents a hard surface. For if it did not, the bullets would penetrate rather than glance off in a ricochet. But on the other hand, these objects are capable of intermediate travel, like going underwater without producing splashes, or going through solid matter like a rock or ground, or changing its shape, or dematerializing and leaving puzzled observers behind. Here is one example of such a highly unusual encounter with the UAP phenomenon of the BOAC flight crew. We served dinner to the passengers and we were serving drinks and we noticed there was some confusion in the cabin. Passengers were all looking out of the um, port side of the aircraft. I went to look too to see what was going on, looked through the window and there we saw these seven objects. The one very large one, which was black and solid looking, it kept changing shape. When we first saw it, it was pear-shaped. And then it was stretched out like a cigar, and then like an inverted telephone. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it did look absolutely solid. There were six little ones flying in formation, sometimes three in front and three behind, or five in front and one behind, but always six, but changing formation. The passengers, of course, asked me what it was, and I had no idea. I went onto the flight deck and asked Captain Howard. When I got onto the flight deck, Captain Howard and the technical crew were also all looking through the window. And when I asked Captain Howard what it was, he simply said, well, I don't know, but for goodness sake, keep the passengers happy. The entire crew and some of the passengers watched this object for 18 minutes. And it maintained station alongside us, some distance away. And I think there's no question that it was no illusion and that it was being intelligently handled. Now, theoretically, such UAP shape-shifting observation can be explained if it is some kind of a dynamic material or programmable soft matter. If you think this is far out, think again. Programmable matter is a legit field in modern science investigating cutting-edge technologies for military and civil industries applications. Here is a citation from one of the many Department of Defense DARPA documents regarding this subject. Quote, Materials can be directly programmed to reversibly change their fundamental properties on demand and in real time when desired by the user. These properties include size, shape, form factor, and moduli. A simple example would be an instant toolkit, an amorphous material that can be programmed to instantly become a hammer, wrench, or screwdriver on demand, and then return to its initial form so it can be reused. They are called the basic element mesoparticle, and that in principle, separability can be exploited to create dynamic materials of unprecedented complexity and capability. But even if all such technologies are possible, they are still based on a dense matter. It appears that UAP phenomenon uses either very clever deception or very advanced physical principles, or a combination of these that are resulting in the effects that could only be partially explained by known technology. 
And it seems like a big critical piece of data is missing here. Obviously, uh, having people present their sightings from other countries and what kind of data they've collected would certainly be of use to us. But of course, we're going to have to share some things that we've learned. And of course, that's, that's what's of great concern, at least in the DOD and intelligence community. And that is they may be missing a critical piece of data uh, to make some giant step forward. And we just happen to have that particular critical piece of data. And if we shared it with them, uh, that would be a problem. Now, we can only speculate what this critical piece of data mentioned by Dr. Putoff really is. But from the standpoint of known physics, it could be a complex plasma. In fact, the term plasma didn't occur even once during his presentation. However, complex plasmas are perfectly capable of going through solid matter and travel intermedia, among many other surprising things. Ken Shoulders, the former colleague of Dr. Putoff, was an experimental physicist attributed the title Father of Vacuum of Microelectronics. He is known for various work related to the field of energy and has also been credited as an early pioneer of electron beam lithography, which has become a key mask-making technology for modern microelectronics. He explained that there is a fascinating new realm of physical effects not covered by present-day single-particle physics description, but still very much a part of the world we live in. The secret is in the effects of electron ensembles dominating all others. Such an ensemble is called exotic vacuum objects, or EVOs, and is just a recent name in a long line of names for an electromagnetic vortex effect in plasma. Shoulders envisioned the possibility of constructing plasma machines based on such exotic vacuum objects technology. He wrote, quote, If such a machine resembles anything, it would most resemble a plasma, the fourth state of matter and the most abundant in the universe. Now, theoretically, complex plasma can be programmed in a form of plasmoid drones that would share many properties reported by UAPs and can be extremely complex in their structure. For example, a minority of reports on ball lighting phenomena that fall into the category of exotic vacuum objects as well describe their behavior in such a way that suggests intelligent control of their movements, as they seem to be inspecting people and things and can enter closed rooms and buildings. It appeared frequently inside Second World War American submarines running along the floor, and it was also spotted pursuing and entering aircraft in flight, which presumably would be impossible for a mindless entity, or one that was not remotely controlled by an intelligent entity as a probe. It can explode, it can be dangerous, and it can even kill people on rare occasions. It can be a base for a technology of alternative life forms. As was theorized by Vadim Tsaitovich and others, complex dust plasmas possess everything needed for the existence of such inorganic life in space. Now, considering the existence of the Kordelewski clouds and the suggestion of Professor Robert Temple in his paper and book that they are intelligent, it makes sense that such a life form would want to monitor what is going on here on Earth. And so, what would make more sense than to have plasmoid reconnaissance? The further suggestion is that one of the many roles of the balls of lightning and similar phenomena, and hence also many UFOs, is operating as scouts and surveillance drones that might originate from such plasma-based intelligence. The sudden movements observed in so many glowing UFOs, the right-angled turns, the rapid disappearances, the vast speeds, the ability to go underwater and re-emerge, and so on, all make instant sense if one assumes that they are complex plasma-based flying systems. Other observable attributes, such as the bright light emission, glowing effects, ability to go through any media, solid or liquid, and keep their integrity, are attributes that are part of their physical nature too. Moreover, as it has already been discovered, complex dust plasmas are perfectly capable of producing matter from nothing in the form of dust particles, the discovery that was firstly reported by Gary Selwyn and his team. But what if it is also capable of producing metallic particles in a similar way? In fact, we know that it can. There are numerous papers regarding this topic where various technologies are discussed based on such possibilities. Then the question is, what if the metallic retrieval materials from the alleged UFO crashes 
were originally produced by plasma-based phenomena. In the public uh, unclassified uh, menu, there are a number of claimed pieces from various crafts, from crashes or, uh, you know, one was shot off uh, decades ago uh, that has pretty good credibility and so on. So I think setting up a materials lab would be the best.